A very good afternoon. Not long we've been saying that one. We are back at the slightly earlier time here. Monday Night Pool here on Free Sports. It's Ultimate Pool, the Masters team, Jameson Simon. We're with you a few hours early. That is because we've got Group 15 to navigate, and then we are straight into our last 16 and quarterfinals. A, a bumper day, Simon. Cannot wait for this one. Yeah, really can't wait. We've been really looking forward to, to Week 15 for a very long time, and we've had to wait longer because it was obviously skipped because of COVID and everything else but for me we're going to find out our, our fourth finalist tonight which is going to be exciting but also we've got Michael Hill here and anytime the six times world champion turns up it's going to be very very exciting. Yeah absolutely couldn't agree more. If you're new around here to the Masters do not worry we've got you covered. Here's absolutely everything you need to know. The Ultimate Pool Masters brings together the best players around and puts them to the ultimate test. 64 players start with 16 groups of four. Each night, four players will be featured with two semi-finals and a final, with one player advancing through the group into the next stage. Once we're through to the last 16, we'll have four more four to one format nights, leaving us ultimately with our final four. Then, on finals night, we have two semi-finals and our grand final to crown the winner. The matches themselves are set to a 50-minute match clock. It's a race to eight frames or zero on the clock, whichever comes first. A 45-second shot clock is in operation, with the final 10 minutes introducing a 15-second shot clock, where only the quick thinking will survive. If a match is tied as the clock runs out, a six-red shootout will decide the winner. We're playing international eight ball rules, so a foul introduces cue ball in hand for your opponent, but the basic premise remains the same. Pick a color set, pot your balls, then pot the eight ball. There's 20,000 pounds in the prize pot, and at the end of it all, the winner will pocket 10 grand, a worthy prize for a marathon event. Welcome to the Ultimate Pool Masters. Yeah, what a fantastic competition it's been. We are we are back here now into round one. We have to sort of rejig our minds a little bit. We've already got three of our four semi-finalists. We'll have our final one by the end of tonight. A few players, though, will have to run the gauntlet. They're going to try and do round one to the semi-finals all on one evening. We'll see how that goes. From first up tonight is the six-time world champion. He is Mick Hill. He's going to be taking on not Sean Jibberfield, though, if that's news to you. We will break that one. Sean is sadly absent due to COVID. We really, really feel for him. We spoke to Sean recently, the Pro Series, talking about how looking forward he was to this competition and playing Mick. And if Sean's watching at home, we do send you our best, mate. Sad to lose him, Simon, but a very able replacement standing in in Jimmy Croxton. Yeah, I sort of echo what you were saying. It is really, really sad to, to lose Sean. It's just the times we're in. We've seen it a few times throughout the competition and the previous competition. Um, so Sean misses out, which is a real shame. But Jimmy comes in, uh, Jimmy Croxon, he missed out earlier on in the year because of COVID as well. So the fact that he gets to step in, I think is fantastic for him. And, and I'm sure he's going to be sort of chomping at the bit to get out there and showcase what he can do. And, and sometimes when you come into an environment like this, you're almost might feel like you're free rolling a little bit as well. So it uh, could be a good night for him. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's certainly an interesting matchup. Two ultimate pool professionals colliding in round number one. Should be a cracker between the Joker and the Goat. The greatest player that's ever played is Mick Pool. The reason why he's the best is his B game is so much better than everybody else's A game. Absolutely one of the greatest to ever play the game. Well, here we go then. The two of them are in the arena, almost ready to go. Mick Hill versus Jimmy Crox. We've also got to look forward to tonight, Usama Maschini, the Moroccan, against the soul man, John Sullivan. Fantastic night. Been looking forward to Group 15 for a very, very long time, and it is eventually time to get underway. Slightly different to originally advertised. The Machine versus the Joker early on. Cannot wait to get going. It's Jimmy with the first break. And we saw him in the Ultimate Pool Pro Series on Free Sports a couple of weeks ago, Simon. And he, he looked really decent, Jimmy Croxton. And 
I think at, th at this sort of level, a really, really dangerous draw for anyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people, you know, especially those that are fairly new to the sport, will be looking at it going, well, you've got the six times world champion out there. He's going to be a big favourite for this for this match and, and for the night. But And yes, he is going to be favourite, but but Jimmy Croxton, he's a he's won professional tournaments. You know, he he knows what it's like to to win tournaments against the very best players in the world. He's a dedicated player. He's a great cueist, and absolutely no surprise to anyone in the pool world if Jimmy was to win this match and and go through not just tonight from this month, but also uh, the second um, second session, if we're calling it that, later on today. He's, he's that talented a player. He's got a little bit of a nudge there, though, going off the jaw to spin him out into back into real open table and could have been very easily stuck behind his own red ball there but he's uh, in perfect position now let's move through the rest of this finish red's the color choice yeah the three reds in the bottom half of the table they're just all sort of half blocking each other it's just the order he takes those out in and, and works it out it's sort of almost the one in the middle of the three that's the the bigger problem uh, at the moment got the one over the pocket that's blocking in the pocket for that ball and it's uh, going to be interesting to see which way he decides to go about trying to clear these three. Oh, that's lovely. That's a brilliant shot really early on. He's played the cannon on the yellow to be on the red into the right centre. Knew that could be the difficult ball and, and he's got it out of the way first of all making this finish. Well, it should be fairly simple from here. That's some shot in the opening frame, isn't it? We've seen plenty of times in this table. We saw plenty of times in the Pro Series. Brand new table, brand new cloth. It is icily quick. And often in the early frames, just takes a second, couple of shots just to get to grips with it. Saw that maybe with Jimmy's first shot off the reds, where he nearly went in off. But that is perfection, really. Yeah, well, brilliant vision, but also the execution spot on. And another one where he could easily have just gone too far behind the, the yellow, but weighted it perfect. And that's a perfect start for Jimmy Croxton. Doesn't matter that he's gone and potted the yellow as well, but this is the key shot. And what a shot. Played to absolute perfection. Yeah, that's exactly what he was trying to do. Get the full ball contact and, yeah, as you say, perfection. Uh, Jimmy Croxton is a man from these parts. We are in Newcastle under Lyme. He is just around the corner. And as Simon mentioned, he's a two-time pro event winner as well. As being a Supreme Masters finalist, that was in 2019, I believe, where he went all the way to the final of one of the Supreme Series events here in this club, which was a 64-man event of a who's who, really, of players. Losing out in a final frame decided to Carl Boys in the end, but... Second frame. That event showed to Hilton, just right? about anyone that Charlie Jimmy Croxton belongs to at the very, very top level of this game. Yeah, and the other thing it shows is how well he knows the rules. Excellent start for for Michael Hill. Look at the way he controlled that cue ball just up the centre of the table. It may have jumped in the air, but he's parked it basically in the centre of the table and he's got a nice split, so he's going to go a great chance to respond. And for those perhaps joining us for the first time on the Masters, first time watching 8-Ball, perhaps we've been lucky to watch Michael Grace, our screens for... I mean, he was prominent during the commentary on the Pro Series, also went well in, in that event, as well as the runner-up of the Champions League. But just how good and why should we think Michael Hill is the one to watch and the man to beat in this event well he's got the nickname the machine and and that's Red it's, it's very apt it really is he sees the game absolutely brilliantly nobody sees it better his patterns the way he works the ball around the table uh, he just he sees ways of making the game look really really simple and you can see him here he's already working out the route he wants all the way through to the eight ball which is his toughest ball on the table As you said, we heard him a lot on commentary talking about about the game, and you, you know he was fantastic asset, you know, on commentary and, and being an analyst in the studio, um, listening to his getting his insights into the game. And you know he talks a lot about the game as a, a game of opportunities, and it won't bother him that he, that first frame's gone against him. He'll just know he needs to get eight opportunities himself. Has he run aground early though? Had the angle to cannon into the eight ball. 
Has he got a route through to that red? I'm not sure he does. Yeah, he, talking about how uh, machine-like he is, that's the cannon he just got wrong. If we're being really picky, he was probably looking for a half-ball cannon on the eight-ball, and he got it uh, almost full ball. In fact, he probably just caught the yellow first, so it's not quite uh, as precise as he wanted to be. And, you know, even then, you know, he still would have expected to be on something. A little bit unfortunate, but... Although you saw it from the overhead, he's absolutely not on it. Might be Christian first, try and clips into the right middle. That's the shot. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> wow. when, you talk, when you talk about Michael Hill being the machine, you sort of underestimate his shot making potential. He's as good as anyone. That is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you hear other players get talked about in terms of their shot making and, and make, coming up with shots like that more often. You know, the players like, you know, your Chris Mellings and your Scott Gillespie's and people like that. But with Michael, it doesn't get talked about as much because he is so machine-like, because he works his way through finishes under complete control so often, you know, in a rare occasion where he hasn't here, and he comes up with that big shot. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Got a glimpse in the, in the watching public there of Jake McCartney and Scott Gillespie, two ultimate pool professionals. Scott will be potentially playing one of these two later on tonight. If it goes well for him and indeed one of these two. He's in the last 16 group which follows us later on this evening. But what a start for both men here. What a start. We've got two fantastic clearances off the break for both players. And how about this from Mick the Machine Hill. It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Puts himself in a little bit of trouble with that cannon and then comes up with that. He is the six-time world champion, the six-time European champion. He won the, he's won just about every event there is to win. He was runner-up in the Champions League earlier on this year on free sports. He was beaten to that title just by Chris Melling in a really, really high-quality final. Odds on to qualify through from tonight's group, which when you consider the three men who are in it is pretty good going. Yeah, not only that, I think he's I think he's the fourth favourite to, to win the tournament. And when you consider that the other frame. three ahead of him are already in the semi-finals, <laughs> he's <laughs> one frame more. you know, and he's still in the first round. It just shows you, you know, how highly rated he is. The other thing, he's he's in his forties now, he's forty one years old, but he's he's not slowing up at all because many of those world titles have been in recent years. You know, he's the current world champion. Yeah. Another good break from Jimmy Hill to take that. A little bit congested around the middle of the table. This will need some working out, but you just want to be at the table with a chance to go and win the frame. Because as we've spoken about before in recent weeks, you know, you can list every accolade under the sun for Michael Hill, and he's probably won them. But the difference is in this sport is doesn't necessarily always matter who you're playing. If you get up to the table and take your chances... That is what it's all about. You can really play your own game. and That's what Jimmy will be trying to do here. Trying to squeeze a yellow in the middle. That's an excellent shot. That yellow really is. Play. Brave shot as well. Play, <laughs> taking that on, knowing that if he doesn't make this, and look how tough this is through the gap. This is, this is every bit as good as the shot that Michael's just played. Absolutely <sighs> brilliant. And he knows playing that, if he misses that, he's in his mind, he's thinking, I lose the frame because I'm opening up, opening up everything. So showing huge confidence with that shot choice and... Well, he's got the rewards now. He just needs to hold himself together. One Ooh. good pot down the rail and land with good position and the frame is there for him. No, he's a fabulous cueist, is, is Jimmy. He really is. Saw it on your free sports screens in the Pro Series. Made one absolutely unbelievable pot down the rail at full pace with topspin. Didn't even clip a jaw. He even had someone like Chris Melling purring. He's just left himself awkward on this occasion. He's taken the plants on because he can't get position on the one over the pocket or from the one over the pocket. And he needs to be on the one over the pocket again now. Is that red in the way? It's very tight. And even if he can see it, getting position onto that last yellow, it's still awkward. So he may be gearing himself up here for the yellow to the bottom left corner. Much tougher pot. Much tougher. Oh, 
will take that. Just for a second there, I thought he was going to pop both and leave himself an awkward eight ball, but it's come out perfectly for him. He deserved that. Thought this match might be a high standard. We are being treated. This is what we hoped it would be. Between two top, top players. Superstar, 2-1. No faults yet from either player. And even when they've ever so slightly, marginally gone awry, they have had the ability to turn it back around. Superstar. Yeah, three frames, three break clearances. It really is a very high standard to start out there. And I talk about it a lot when we've got uh, two great players out there, how often it can come down to one or two mistakes. I mentioned Jake McCartney was watching. There he is, the Pro Series 2 winner. You can keep up with the Pro Series on Free Sports. We are back in the middle of September, the weekend of the 17th, 18th and 19th. Jake, who was superb in winning the second Pro Series event, and his very first Ultimate Pool tournament. He'll be back defending it in Ultimate Pool 3 and 4. Trailing two frames to one. Coming up in a few weeks. Ah, quarter month. Michael Hill, back to the table. Makes a ball. That's a really nice split. It's a really good break there. Look at the amount of balls above the halfway point. He's queued that beautifully again. Just for a second, I thought the cue ball was going to get kicked into that top right corner, but it stays on the table and, and a lovely split for him. Hardest ball on the table, regardless of colour set, will be the eight ball. I mean, he, he likes the look of the yellows. Is, is he trying to like nudge the eight the ball out? Well, play. he's nudged the red out, which is... He may well have been playing into the eight ball rather than the, the red. Perhaps got a touch too much side in it, but it, it's got the same result because the eight ball now goes to the corner pocket. You see if he misses the missed the red and just got into the eight ball, it would have nudged the eight ball over the centre, which would have made the finish a little bit easier. But he's still got a good chance here. Has to control the cannon on this shot. Doesn't want to tie up one of the yellows. Lovely. So the one ball to really look at is which ball is going to be the last ball to get onto that eight ball? And also, when are you going to remove the yellow on the right-hand side? You could leave it as a plant, but the yellow at the top of the table is just to the left-hand side of the pocket, which means if he plays the plant up the rail in a couple of shots time, the yellow he's playing could go away from the pocket. So it just needs to be careful with that. You can see him just nodding his head, trying to work out the, the whole route here. I don't think he's perfect here. He's got the, the plant to the corner, but he's guaranteed to be going into the, the one nearest the right middle. He's still not perfect. You can look at the, the yellow on the cushion and say, well, you could take the one nearest the middle, go down, take the one on the cushion up to the top, but then you could nudge the yellow away from the pocket and not be on anything for your last ball. So that's probably not a great option. And if you don't go that way, then you could end up leaving your the yellow on the rail as your last ball, and then you have to come past those reds to get onto the eight ball. So. Well, this requires precision, because if he moves this yellow, he is... Potentially not on an awful lot. This needs to be played perfectly. I love the way he's played oh, the cue ball there. That's so controlled, isn't he? Yeah, just flicking a little bit left-hand side to make sure the cue ball was going up to the top end of the table as well. So even though the yellow was going to move away from the pocket, he was, a, he was guaranteed to be on it, and then he was backing himself to find a way to get onto the eight ball. Still needs to play a very good shot here to, to get through these reds. Going to pick anyone to pick a line through, though. This man will be at the top of your list. 
Doesn't need to clip the red. Ooh. Is he just about on it? No, I don't think he is. It's been a very un Michael Hill like visit to the table. Once he nudged the the eight ball open, he hasn't quite been able to get hold of that cue ball to the point where he's, he's now ended up snookered on the eight ball. Normally, you know, you can tell three, four balls out that he's got complete control of the cue ball and, and then he just works his way through it and he's almost been chasing this one a little bit. This would be some shot. Very, very difficult and essentially concedes the frame by doing that. These reds or an open table should be a gimme. But that's very unlike, very unlike Mick. So just before he played that shot, I might have even put a little bit of the commentator's curse on him and, you know, to apologize to the great man if I did. But you wouldn't have picked many players better equipped to pick the line to be able to land on that that eight ball, it wasn't easy. I think if he looks back at the finish as a whole, though, he'll probably be more annoyed that he wasn't able to just grab hold of it, you know, after the second shot and actually just work out a route that meant he had the perfect ball just to drift onto the eight ball as the last ball. And that's normally what he's so good at is picking that pattern, picking that route to make it look really, really simple. And on this occasion, he wasn't able to do that, but I still thought he was going to land on the eight ball. I mentioned in, the, in between the last frame and this one that there's very few mistakes when players are playing at this level, so it's important that you punish it. Jimmy's turned up in a big way tonight, though. He looks really confident. It's a dangerous opponent. Jimmy Croxton Frank. goes into the lead. He breaks the serve for the first time in the night. One of the four men playing in our afternoon session will be joining our fan dad, Scott Gillespie and Rob Warren. That's what's to come from half past seven this evening. That's when you'll join us again. Our fan dad versus Scott Gillespie for a place in the quarterfinal. And they will play the winner of Rob Warren and the winner of this group we're watching right now. It will be Jimmy Croxton or Mick Hill versus one of Usama Maschini and John Sullivan. Now then, big break coming up for Jimmy Croxton. Can he put daylight between himself and Mick Hill? Jimmy Croxton to break. Yeah, and he's had break clearances in his first two breaks as well, so he'll be feeling very, very confident of making a ball. He's already shown how confident and aggressive he's feeling out there with his shot choices in his previous break clearance. Oh, I think he's going to come up dry. He is. Didn't get a hold of that break. You'll we'll see it here in the slow motion. Middle part of the pack just not really moving. It almost looked like the cue ball was sort of bouncing Red down the play. table and landed at the same time as touching the, the pack and it just killed a lot of the power out of it. Whenever you oh is he snooking himself again? No, I think he's just about okay. I'd say a lot of the time when you break, the, the cue ball is bouncing down the table. When you see it in super slow motion, you really get to see that. Sometimes you can get that bad contact. Looks like Michael's just uh, speeding up a little bit here. Probably yeah, picked up the pace in a big way. Probably just felt like he overthought that previous finish a, finish a fraction, and he just wants to sort of roll through it, play a little bit more on instinct. Not often you see Michael Hill play at this sort of pace. It's like a different player to the previous frame in terms of speed. He has rattled through these. Back to one away, back on his break. And that is 
just about one of the quickest clearances we'll see in this tournament. He absolutely flew through them there, Mick Hill. Perhaps a fraction angry as well with the, the fact that he didn't get on the eight ball Wouldn't in the previous frame. Me. And he, he may not be showing it out there. You know, he looks very controlled, but just the way he was at the table there, maybe. A reminder that the Ultimate Pool Pro Series continues in a month's time in September. Really, really looking forward to seeing that man go again. Declan Brennan already eliminated out of this competition. Josh Kane, the man who claimed his scalp. We'll see Josh Kane versus Phil Harrison in the first semi-final on finals night. Cannot wait for that. Frame Monday six. night pool isn't going too far though. To Stay tuned for Training three frames to two. announcement. Who knows, maybe next week as to what you can expect to come next. Massive break again from Michael, look at the way he controls the cue ball. All three breaks he's hit so far, the cue ball has just come straight up the center of the table. It shows you he's catching it well. And these have opened up really nicely for him. I think he's looking at, at reds. It's just going to be that red on the left-hand side. The one above the, the centre pocket. If he finishes behind, he could drop it in the centre, but more likely we're looking to play it into the top corner pocket. It's also in a good position for a double if he feels it's needed for the for the route, but I suspect he'll play on it. Red ball's in play. I think if the red passes the red in the triangle area passes the eight ball to the bottom right hand corner that could just help things oh is he snooking himself well, he was playing on that one in the triangle area to the opposite corner than when i was suggesting because it doesn't go to the the bottom right and yeah, i think he's snooking reason. himself on it which is huge Stop the pop. can we get a replay of that hub, please It sounds like Michael has just quest just wondered whether he touched the yellow with his hand and the referee didn't see it and Michael's not 100% certain. So I think, I think the referee is going to have a, a little look at a replay just to see whether he has touched the yellow with his hand. So watch his, his hand here. Oh, can't see anything on the replay. Oh, see me. Unless, uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Can we just see it again? Let's have another look. I think if, if Michael thinks he has, he probably has just about touched it, but you can't see anything on the replay. Oh, yeah. Do you think you have? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say foul then. Thank you, Mick. Yeah. Foul, ball in hand. Time running, please. Can we reset the shot time, Sam? So the foul okay. has been awarded and I think Michael probably knew you know he's it, the referee didn't see it and you can see on the replay why because the ball didn't move at all but you know as a player when you just about touch a ball uh, he would have felt it on his finger and uh, quite rightly called the foul on himself yeah good to see the the honesty really from from Mick there and what a time to do it as well well, he had already put himself in trouble, so it, it, I would say if he wasn't snooking on that red by the eight ball, you'd say it was a clearance you'd expect him to make. But he was in a position where he had a very awkward cutback double as an only shot, so it wasn't a certainty that he was going to run out from there, but it could be the difference between 3-3 three, three and 4-2 and for, for sure. And important that, that Jimmy Croxton make sure it is the difference. Already talked about how few mistakes players like Michael make. When they are made, you have to punish them, and... Jimmy just comes up short. You see him just grimacing just as he stepped out of camera shot there. He needed to be just off straight on that and he's left himself half ball. Very difficult to, to hold the white now, now. He might even play into it. Needs a good cannon if that's what he's doing. Oh, great shot. Shot. That's a really, really good shot. Jimmy Croxton is 
playing really well tonight. Hold up, he says. Oh, I talked that one onto the red. This is now horrible. He's all right. He can pot it. But goodness me, this is tough. How's your queuing? No. The difficulty of that pot with a roll of the cue ball went from one you make 95 times out of 100 to what? 20% if that? It's such it, a tough shot. Yeah, I, I'm not even putting it at 20%. That's a 1 in 10 shot he's left himself there. That really is tough. Um, and it's, to be honest, you know, being ultra critical, it, it was a little bit careless. It was almost, I, I felt it. Uh, that once you make once you made that cannon on the rail for me that was frame over yeah uh, you know I was sort of I'd already you know started to, to chalk it up mentally and um, you know and, and if Jimmy probably did the same thing and actually he still had to put a good cue ball onto that last pot to land on the eight ball nicely and just over hit it and that could be the difference you know we've already talked about the big difference between four two and three three and you know it's, it's this is a big big frame now when we look back at the end of this match we'll be talking about this frame for sure Oh, Mix laid the snooker. So, he's expecting to come back to the table here and polish off these four reds. Oh, Jimmy went close. It's a great effort. He's left a decent enough white, but I don't think Mix is going to struggle here to clear these up. That wasn't far away. Play for the red in the centre. Delicate little shot, but he's fine. With it being a little bit of angle, it just means you can get the cue ball off without having to overhit the shot, which is nice. Absolutely nothing to split them on the scoreboard then. Michael the Machine and Jimmy the Joker are all square at three apiece. We'll find out who's going through to this afternoon's final when we come back. Welcome back to the Masters on Free Sports. Michael Hill back in amongst the balls off his own break. He's now 4-3 down. That scoreboard has changed since you were last with us. Jimmy Croxton with a fabulous break and dish in the break. I'll show you some of the highlights from that at the end of this frame. But Mick Hill here, three balls off the break. He's gone yellows. Just to tie things back up. Race to eight, remember, in our opening couple of rounds. And I think it might well go the distance, this one, if it carries on at its current rate. Loads of high-quality finishes, but they're both doing it. And the time is just getting a little bit long, isn't it? Chance yeah. we go all the way. They're both playing fantastically well. Just one, one or two mistakes each, really, but... When they're getting these chances, they're making the most of them. But it's so far, it's always been Michael responding to to Jimmy Croxton's chances you know, that he's taking. Left him. Look at the shake of the head. He's left himself awkward over the eight ball once again, just like Jimmy did a couple of frames ago. This is slightly easier though. Foul. Well, well, well. That Ball could hand. be massive. Yeah, it's a big surprise. I still thought he was going to make that as awkward as it was. There was enough gap between the cue ball and the eight ball. And yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's got this one all wrong. Just watch the cue. It clips the eight ball on the way through. There you go. And obviously misses the pop because of it by a long, long way. Well, we felt that frame six was going to be massive when Jimmy Croxton should have gone 4-2 in front. He responded, for me, with the best clearance of the match so far, the way he was able to do it. And 
And here we are again, and he's about to open up another two-frame advantage. So that mistake he made, he has not let affect him, which is massive. Jimmy's been lethal in this match so far. He leads by five frames to three. This is how we went 4-3 at Mines. Whilst we were at break, have a look at this for a cannon to open the table up. Really, really lovely shot. Yeah, he had a really good opportunity, but it just got a little bit awkward and he left himself in a position where it was going to be really hard to find a route through. And he, by playing that little cannon and getting that cannon perfect, left himself a lovely route to go up the table for his ball at the top and, yeah, made the, made the finish look quite simple. And I was looking at it thinking, this might be tough to get out from here, the way it all, all sort of, he had to nudge a couple of balls. So brilliant stuff from, from Jimmy Croxton. And for me, the best part about that was the fact it was on the back of a big mistake. Oh, what a chance this is now. Ninth frame. Jimmy Croxton to Ray. Leading five frames to three. So far, Jimmy Croxton's had four breaks. He's made a ball off three of them, and every time he's made a ball, he has finished it. So three break clearances so far. crunch those. Oh, he's going to get kicked on. Oh, I thought he was going to get kicked in off. It's not come out nice. Can he get through to the bottom of the table or is he stuck behind that yellow? He may not get a chance to yeah. break and clear hit. Does he have a shot? If he can see the yellow over the right middle pocket, then this is a really good opportunity for him to, to make another finish. But if he can't, he's in real trouble. A little swerve round it, perhaps. He could take a, a red long. He can't play the red onto the yellow. You have to go for the colour set you're playing. So if you take on a red, you have to pot a red to be reds. So if he wants to go reds, it'd have to be to the long pocket or make a skill shot, which is very unlikely from that angle. Extension call. Or he could just a little small swerve around the around the red. Oh, can he see it directly? No, he's going for the long long red right in the heart of the Red pocket. Play. It's very, very good. Talks. Playing with a lot of confidence out there. Yeah, we talked earlier about his his performance in the Pro Series. He was very confident, made some very, very good balls in that game. And he's turned up in this tournament here, Jimmy, and he's settled, he's confident. And he's quality. That was already a given. But the level of comfort and confidence that he's shown, when you mix that with the quality that he's got, very, very dangerous operator for anyone. And Mick has got some real work to do here. Once he's made that, that red to the corner, that first shot from there, it, it was a case of just mapping out the right way to go. And he's mapped these out really, really nicely so that he was going to leave the road over the left centre as his last ball. He would have loved another two inches of angle on this this red, though. He may have to leave the eight ball from a bit further away than would have been ideal. Can't quite get the cue ball as far across the table as he wants. Really tried to force it across. Still not perfect. Wonder if he can just uh, top this on and off. I think he's close. Got a fraction of angle, hasn't he? Oh, he's tried. Yeah, lovely. That'll do. That will do. Jimmy Croxton to go two from home. Are we on for a big upset here? Jimmy Croxton, six three in front of the six time world champion. Looking to join Phil Harrison, the qualifier from our first quarter of the Masters draw. Take a look at the names that didn't make it. The likes of Jordan Shepard, Clint Ianson, Chris Melling, Dylan Leary, Mark Farnsworth, John McAllister, first round. The list goes on and on and on. But what a performance it was from Phil Harrison. Probably the best we've seen him in a little while when beating Rob Chilton and then Jordan Shepard too.
Uh, can't wait to see Phil the Farmer in the, on finals night. Yeah, I felt like he came into this tournament coming into Ultimate Pool and, and the shot clock era, if you like, and it looked a little bit quick for him. It looked like it Kent took his Frank. time to, to really get into Middle it, but Frank. he almost Travis built match Frank on match on match, and, and by the time he'd, he got into the set of second round, he was absolutely flying and, and worth uh, you know great value for, for being in that final. I tell you what, James Croxton. I tell you what, you've got a chance here. Michael's at a great break there, and it's come up dry. This is now a massive, massive chance. And look at how those reds have come out as well. Red balls in play. You break dry, all the yellows go to a cushion, and the reds are all just sitting there waiting to be potted. Jimmy just taking his time to work out the route he wants to to go about these, but with the yellows being so far out the way, he doesn't really need to overthink the route. He does need to come up with a route, but it's not one that's you know going to be too difficult for him. It's just about holding yourself together. Only Jimmy Croxton will know, but you know how much playing against a six times world champion in a big live TV event will affect him. It would affect a lot of players, that's for sure, but... It you know, absolutely would, yeah. Jimmy Croxton is a, you know, a big-time tournament winner, so it may not enter his head, but you feel like that's the only thing that can go wrong from this position. Not perfect here. If he takes the one into the left center, he's going to get a little cannon onto that, the red just above it. But he's probably going to cannon the, the left-hand side of that red, which means he might not leave himself nice on his next ball. Oh, we can see the one over the top right. That helps a lot. This is, I suspect, a little bit of a reroute for him, but still in complete control. Just see him stop there to have a look at the, the red to the bottom right. That's the hardest one of the three left. Which is why he's played on it straight away. Yeah, like how he's worked these out. Oh, what a chance for Jimmy Croxon this is. Use the yellow just to hold the cue ball. Just meant he could play the pot a little bit straighter so the cue ball wasn't running away. <clears throat> Jimmy Croxton to go on the hill with his break next. Massive upset Frank. on the cards. Jimmy Croxton goes one away with 10 minutes remaining. And it might be the last time we see Mick Hill touch the ultimate pool masters table. A reminder of quarter two. Josh Kane is our second semi-finalist. He will take on Phil Harrison next Monday night. He got through Declan Brennan in the last 16. In for me, the performance of the tournament so far. I might change that opinion, though, if Jimmy breaks and clears on this on this next frame, because this has been just as good. It, it feels like the, the you know the best performance or the best match has sort of almost changed weekly, really, in terms of the standard these guys are, are setting. But for me, that's Brandon definitely 11. a little rivalry to keep your eye on. That Josh Kane, Declan Brennan, just yeah, seeing how those two guys go over the next year or two. They've already played each other in a couple of really big matches, and I think we're going to see plenty more. Fifteen second shot clock. And he's gonna come up dry. Mick Hill will get a chance to save himself, to keep him in the game. Fifteen second shot clock mines. So he's gotta play quick. Congested table Yellow at the bottom. Play. 
a little bit thin on the one to the top than he would have preferred, but the fact that he is thin means at least he can get down the table. Oh, how's this finished? It's not finished nicely for him. Oh, this is big trouble. He's going to probably just... Uh, well, I, th I thought he was going to be able to try and plant the red into the pocket, but in the end, he was just trying to open everything up. He wants to keep it open, and, you know, if Jimmy Croxton makes the finish, then so be it, because the time is of the essence for, for Michael Hill. Just being thinner on that one at the top of the table just took away an element of the control when he came down the table, and he just needed a nudge to go his way, and it didn't. Two reds on the right-hand side aren't a straight plant to their corner and might be quite difficult to make. So he may just look to nudge the the inside one of the two. Just a, a small little nudge here would do. Oh, he's missed it. Yeah, you get that little sarcastic player's tap of the table. Yeah, I love how that's become a, a bit of a thing <laughs> in the pool world. <laughs> This is not easy, especially when you look all the way through this. The two reds at the top are still a problem, difficult to solve now that he doesn't have a good ball to do that with, but also the eight ball at the bottom of the table. It's a problem. Oh, and then he misses. Mick straight in. He's not going to mess about here. He knows time is of the essence. Is it pricey, Jimmy, not try and play safe? I know it wasn't particularly easy to do so. Yeah, I was I was starting to look at the table thinking that this isn't going to be a finish he's going to make, so how can you play safe? And then he missed the pot, so I didn't really try and look through that much. But yeah, I think a safety might have been a better option if he had a good safety. Well, Mick was never going to waste that chance. He's back in the hunt. 7-4, Mick's break next. A bit of a smile and a joke between the two players. We watched uh, Michael Hill in the Pro Series. I was fortunate enough to be able to watch it from the arena. I had a match off from the commentary when he played John Story and a match that was absolutely fantastic and he ultimately lost in a six-red shootout. But the one thing that really stood out to me, how much Michael Hill was enjoying the match out there, how much he embraced the pressure and loved it. So no surprise to see him have a bit of a smile on his face there. Well, that is the soul man, John Sullivan, on the left there. Frame 12. Michael He's Frank. next Frank up, frames up against Usama Maschini. Well, he needed a ball, and he's got a ball. Looks like he's taking on reds, and there's one bad red on the table. Oh, he's missed the first pot. Rushing to try and get it done quickly, and he missed the, the opening ball. How costly might that be? I think the frustrating thing there for Michael red is that actually when you look at the layout at the bottom, yes, there is that one bad red, but he had the perfect ball to be able to cannon into it. And, well, we never know whether that would have landed for him, but 7-5 with six minutes left on the clock certainly would have been interesting, but now it's all in Jimmy Croxton's hands once again. This is the shot, nudge the red out. And I think that will do. That will do. The red goes to the corner now. He can use the one at the top to land on it. Four balls away from a massive win. He's having a look at this one down the right rail. Never in doubt. Needs to make sure he gets the cue ball across. He wants to be further right than where it is now. That's perfect. You could not put it better. Jimmy Croxton parachuted in as a reserve. Takes out the six-time world champion. 
What a victory for the Joker, who was certainly not messing around in round number one of the Masters. A superb performance and absolutely deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Jimmy Croxton played a fantastic match there. He did make that one big error that we talked about a fair bit in frame six. Other than that, he played a fantastic match and, and took the opportunities that came his way. And, and yes, Michael missed a couple of opportunities, but he was put under pressure by Jimmy Croxton and, and absolutely full value for his victory. Well, what a victory that is for Jimmy Croxton. Superb performance from him, and he awaits the winner of our next match. That's Osama Maschini against John Sullivan. Can't wait for this one. It's next. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Masters here on Free Sports. We have seen some upsets and some surprises and some big names fall in this competition, but none as big as this. Six-time world champ Mick Hill is out, defeated in round one by Jimmy Croxton. Just before we move on to our next match, Simon, how big a victory is that? for Jimmy himself. It's a massive victory. You know, there's not been that many events over the last few years. Jimmy's sort of stepped away from the game a little bit as well. So even though it's not a surprise in the fact that, you know, I knew and, and everyone in the pool world knows that he's capable of performances like that. We've seen it from him before, but it would have been a while since he's had a big victory like that. So, you know, it is massive for, for Jimmy Croxton and it, it could give him a, you know, a big lift as we go further ahead in this tournament and further ahead with the Pro Series. Uh, it, it's a massive, massive moment for Jimmy, I think. Yeah, let's hope so. Superb performance from him. He goes into tonight's, uh, well, this afternoon's final to potentially go all the way through to the semis later on this evening. All right, then. Next match is upon us. It should be a cracker. This is for the right to face James in the next round. It's a Simon Maschini against the Soul Man, John. Two best nicknames in the sport, hands down. The Soul Man. On the right there, John Sullivan against the small tiger, Osama Maschini. I was chatting to Osama a little bit earlier on, and I asked him about the origin of his small tiger nickname, and it came, and you can see it's on his, on his shirt and everything, he really goes by the moniker, and it came from when he was a youth player in Morocco, and he was playing men's tournaments and winning them and going through senior competition. And one of his friends said, you, you're like a tiger in, in these tournaments. But Islam was not the biggest, and he also at the time was not the oldest. So he, he was given the nickname the small tiger, and it's just stayed that way ever since. Oh, I absolutely love it. This is fantastic. And well, it will be the small tiger that gets us underway in this match. It certainly will, and he'll be disappointed to come up dry. So John Sullivan, first to the table. A big chance for the Soul Man on the TV stage to get us going. Really interesting matchup this for me. Uh, we've seen a, a fair bit of John Sullivan on, on free sports with Ultimate Paul over the last 18 months or so. Oh, Foul. no. Won't we'll be seeing much more of him in this, in, this, uh, in this frame, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he can quite believe the cue ball's gone through that gap into the pocket. But yeah, not the best start for John. But I was going to say that we've seen a fair bit of John and we saw him win a couple of matches in the in the Champions League, but ultimately went out at the first stage and, you know, didn't have the best of, of Pro Series weekends as well. So he's kind of in need of a, a confidence boosting win. He's up against, I wouldn't say an unknown quantity, but a guy we've seen a lot less of here on Free Sports. But he comes over with a really Red good record from, from Morocco. I think he's the... Moroccan national champion or, or was in 2019 I'm not sure if it's been played since and he's also had a very good run in the Masters as well so he's you know he's more than capable of playing at this level yeah absolutely I've been watching him practice earlier and proper player well, he's got a really nice opening chance here following that that in off from from John Sullivan and the one quick question mark I, I'm going to throw out there with Osama is, is the fact that he hasn't played with a short shot clock that often um, if at all and it's a case of how quickly he's going to adapt to that how quickly is he going to adapt to the pace he's required out there at the moment at 45 seconds a shot it's not going to be much of a problem for him it's just if it's tight when we go into the back end of the match I have a feeling, canning that red has really given him a bit of a headache there. 
I think he needed a slightly thicker contact. He was actually trying to avoid it altogether and slide by it so he can take it into the, the bottom left corner, top left as we look from our overhead. Yeah. Um, but the, when he got the cannon, it's just gone awkward. Well, so much so he's had to play the plant. Oh, and good shot. It's a great shot. Still awkward on... It's not one you wanted to play in your opening frame, is it? But have a look at this. Excellent execution. It really is. To put yourself under that pressure and come up with it. He's not perfect, though. He's awkward on both the last two reds that are left. Oh, the small tiger is absolutely not out of the woods right now. Or would that be the rainforest? <laughs> <laughs> if he takes the red to the bottom left corner, he's going to be canning the yellow. And if he catches it full ball, he could leave himself a horrible last shot. Oh, he's caught it cushion first, so he has got that horrible last shot, but at least he still has the last shot. Not sure if he's, if he's absolutely straight, he can just follow it through, take a, a tricky eight ball in the middle. But if he's raising the butt to stun it in, oh, wow. What a shot. That is queuing. I was about to say, it's going to having to raise the butt to, to get into the cue ball is just going to add to the tariff. But, wow, what a shot that was. If he can make this eight ball, and he has, that is a very, very good marker to lay down if you're a Simon Maschini. Right. First frame, a big competition on the telly. Few questions lingering around. There you go. Answered. Cheers. Man yeah. from Saleh in Morocco. As you can see there, Moroccan champion in 2019, as well as a Masters semi finalist. He's won plenty of big competitions in North Africa as well. He's a big outsider to qualify this evening. And. Must say, I did think when I was watching him around the table earlier on, watching him practice, I thought that seems a little long. Re I suppose that can happen though when you're in a group with, with Mick Hill. <laughs> I think that's it. I think when you've got you know Mick Hill in your group, he's going to just sway the odds a little bit. When you've got a six times world champion, but yeah, when you look at you look at Osama Moschini's CV and you look at what he's won, what he's achieved, and how talented he is, and obviously we got to see him practice this afternoon. Yeah, that that was quite an eye-catching. Uh, uh, odds and he'll be looking to prove the, the bookmakers wrong for sure that is a hammer of a break from John Sullivan he's got so much natural cue power as, as John he's got a really easy on the IQ action really flowy and when he times it well he absolutely crunches them and these yellows are are all there. Just needs to mind his work on this right side of the table. Biggest pattern, take them out in order and shouldn't really have too many problems. Yeah, as he gets one, it opens up another and, and so on and so forth. Hold up. He's all right. I think he needed to do that just to open up the eight ball. But then the eight ball it looked like it was tracking in as well. So it probably do, did just about go, but felt it was worth moving it. That's made things ever so slightly easier as well. He's played that actually quite well. He's playing around the table with you know, quite a bit of purpose out there, really trying to sort of, you know, he's not even thinking about the fact that, you know, it's 45 seconds. He's not getting halfway through it. Oh, he's point. never playing to a 45 second <laughs> shot clock. Even before shot clocks really became a thing, John's been around the game a very, very long time. He's always played with a real purpose. That's part of his. Almost his persona around the table, isn't it? When he's when he's on it, he can be a very domineering player. That was a lovely little cannon. That could easily have gone wrong. Uh, he's just uh, nudged it on and made it look simple. One apiece. Frame. Well, that's excellent from John Sullivan. The first opportunity in that opening frame went straight in off with his first shot. And as I've already mentioned, you know, hasn't uh, set the world alight in his performances so far here on free sports with ultimate pool. So probably comes in here maybe a little bit low on confidence. And, and that uh, he didn't show it in that frame, though. That was uh, excellent to work his way through that finish because they were one was blocking another and had to sort of take him in a really nice order. But also looked like he was really dominant out there at the table as well. Very purposeful as he was working his way round. 
Well, Stephen Jameson's just popped out of the commentary box so we can get a few words with Jimmy Croxton, who won our first match tonight. Yeah, I certainly can. Jimmy, first of all, massive congratulations. Fantastic performance out of you out there. That we've, We saw, we said in the start of the commentary, the pro series, you showed us the sort of talent that you've been wanting to show us on, on this pool table. How pleased were you with the way you played tonight? Because it was barely a foot wrong. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a great result against Mick. You know, he's, he's arguably, you know, the, the best player eight ball, sort of him and, him and Gaz really um, very very sort of close um, but you know, to beat one of the greats play? on the biggest stage in pool uh, in the world at the minute is, is phenomenal you know it's a great feeling but I've obviously got to move on and I've got another game to play now so it, I, I, as daft as it sounds I've got to forget about it yeah which hopefully you know later on down the line you'll be able to look back with a lot of positives but how did you feel that the match went because from the get from the gun you were you were right on it and it felt like that first frame really set the tone for you. Yeah, I mean, I think I was I was queuing well. I've been putting the hours in, and unfortunately, I missed out on my actual week that I was scheduled for due to COVID. So, um, sort of good news for me that I got back in the draw. You know, sort of bad news if you like for most players that they're obviously going to be playing Mick. Um, but it was nice to, to, to be out there and obviously I just you know, took my chances. I've been practicing hard and, and putting the hours in, so it, it shows. I think apart from the sort of one shot where I left myself bridging above the red on the black, which I had to laugh at myself because I was telling myself play it a different way when I was on the shot and I should know better. But for all that, you know, I felt like I played quite well. You've had to wait an awful long time to be in this competition. I know there's been moments where you haven't even been able to be in the competition as well. So how special was it to finally get yourself out there on the table and, you know, play your game yeah brilliant I mean uh, I secured a few new sponsors this season which is great you know and obviously I want to thank them for, for all the help and obviously to get on the biggest stage you know on the TV and in front of all the pool fans for them more than anything is is, is good um, it's nice for them to sort of see me here sort of donning their logos and, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm quite happy well you've got a great match later on against either one of these two gents on the table at the moment we can't wait to watch that we wish you the very best of luck thank you very much back to you Si Oh, great to hear from Jimmy Croxton after his victory earlier on. And, on. Oh, what a shot there is from John Sullivan. And Frame. he lets us know about it as well. He potted himself into all sorts of trouble. And that is outrageously good from John Sullivan. Uh, Stephen Jameson just rejoins me in the commentary box just as we have another replay of this. Oh, you're joking. There's my live reaction. <laughs> Wow, incredible. I was just think just about to say how he's worked his way through this finish and left himself no shot on the eight ball. And even if he gets solid contact, I couldn't see how he can make it. But somehow he squeezed that through the cap. And, you know, it's a big difference. He goes one, uh, two frames to one up instead of two frames to one down. Uh, could be a massive moment when we look back at this match. John Sullivan to break. Wow, -y. Leading two frames to one. You have a lovely, nice interview with Jimmy Croxton. You come back and you see John Sullivan bounding about <laughs> in the arena, wondering what on earth's happened. Well, that that explains everything. Brilliant shot, and he's he's in again. Well, and the other thing that does is, you know, that's he, he went break clearance and that completed a reverse clearance, and here we go again. You know, he, we mentioned it on the first frame. Or well, the first real opportunity he got at the table obviously went off in off on his first shot, but he does Red look very right. you know, he is bouncing around the table. He's really purposeful out there, looks confident. Cluster at the top left. Just slightly awkward. Looks like he can play the outside one of the three onto the one nearest the pocket. He has to be careful that he doesn't tie that one up with the yellow. So we may play it firmer. And when doing that, it would open up the other one at the top of the table. So he could, with one good shot, open up those three fairly comfortably. Could be leaving them for his last three balls here. To me, it looks like the angle on the, the red would be exactly where the red is on the table now. The red on the right-hand side, if he could put the cue ball where that is, it's perfect because he could play the plant, little cannon into the yellow, knowing that the red he's planting goes away from the pocket and he's on the other one. Let's see where he leaves the cue ball. Yeah, he's tried to leave it on exactly the same line. 
I've massively enjoyed tonight already. We've still got such a good long way to go. We haven't reached tonight. <laughs> it's the same. Well, yeah. yeah. Quite. Well, he could get through to the one over the pocket, which made things a lot easier. Overscrewed it by a fair bit, but a much better choice of shot than having to play the plant. Oh, well then. just flick the red rather than potting it clean and that has caused all the problems wanted the cue ball into the yellow and to hold it all up he's going to try and pot the red by screwing back off the yellow because he is great effort oh so he was touching ball on the red that would it would that would have had him bouncing around the arena again i'm sure if this had gone it's a really clever go he's unlucky so that will look quite confusing to, to many of you that are new to the sport. But if you are touching the, the red as you, and you're on reds, then you are deemed to have played it. So you can play away from the red, use the yellow to then screw back and pop the red again. It's uh, a very clever choice of shot. And OK, he would have left himself an awkward eight ball, but he'd have been happy to take it on. Now then, Osama just has to compose himself, get himself back in the game. Yeah, the other thing that does is it just puts a bit of pressure on on Osama because, you know, having to read over the pocket, he didn't leave him a, a clean run to counter clear. This to me is a gamble. He's played a sort of a two-way shot though. It's not just the snooker. He was trying to make sure he blocked the eight ball as well to the bottom right corner to at least make it difficult for, for John if he does manage to make the pot. Foul. Which he doesn't. So the gamble's paid off for Osama Maschini. Ball in hand. So oh, cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. For me, this is where you just completely forget about that that red. It's not involved in play. You just got to back yourself and go about this clearance. And to his absolute credit, and the you know the one frame that we've seen a summer at the table, plenty of reasons to back himself. You know, it, invariably this is this is a game of chances as we've spoken about a lot in recent weeks. Asama has been around a long enough time. He's he knows exactly how this game works. Just needs to bide his time and play what he can play. Touch thin here. He was able to control it. Absolutely wants to be on the one on the right-hand side, and I don't think he is. And look at the angle he has on the one in the middle. It's not ideal. So he actually got into that cue ball more than I thought he could, and probably more than he thought he could. And we've talked about it a lot. This very, very responsive table out there. This needs a good shot. Oh, he's played that really well. Some standard tonight, really. It really has been. So Maschini just goes 2-2. Two, two. Thought that was Frame. just going to bounce off the far jaw for a second. I think he did too by how wide the eyes were for a moment. But we are all square again. This is John Sullivan. I'm from North London. He's been around an awful long time. He's uh, won plenty of big events. That Bapto singles title, his biggest in 2005. What that graphic doesn't show you is almost the away from tournament accolades. He's a big match money player. Loves that side of the game. Loves taking on some really, really top players, some big pots. And of course, that reputation and those those accolades and those victories have led him to the position where he is in now, where he's, he's in these big tournaments. And, you know, he's invited to be an ultimate pool professional. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, uh, there probably isn't any statistics kept on this, but if there was, you know, who's, who sort of played the most money matches, I can't think of anyone that's played more than John Sullivan. He's in the he's in the hundreds, if not a couple of hundred, you know, matches, which is incredible, really, because he doesn't play for small small amounts of money. And it, for me, that just shows how much he likes being out there. Wants to be centre of attention. Wants to wants to entertain and, and showcase what he can do. And you know, he's absolutely now got the platform to do that here on on Free Sports with Ultimate Pool.
Well, first time tonight that Osama Moschini has made a ball off the break. Yeah, didn't he need it? Red balls in play. Because when players are playing as well as this, you just got to get yourself to the table. You can't afford to break dry on a night like this. Yeah, you can't. You can't have second visit, second chance in, you know, against great players and expect to win too many matches. You need to be getting first opportunities. And okay, that doesn't always mean you have to go for the finishes, but you want that first, first visit to the table. Uh, it did look a little awkward, and so it proved. Oh, it's a good chance now for John. I think that first positional shot went wrong for Osama. He wasn't where he wanted to be at all. Yeah, I think he was trying to get further across the right-hand side. He wanted to deal with the reds at the bottom of the table before going up the table and, and just left it a touch short. The yellow at the top of the table is a tricky one here for John Sullivan, and he's not landed nicely on anything at the bottom either. He can drop this one in the left centre. He may take it to the top left corner because it gives him better position. He's going up the table. Drops that in nicely. Excellent shot from John there. That yellow at the top of the table, really hard to land nicely on it, and he's done really well to get to where he has. Great chance now for John to get this fifth frame on the board. They've rattled them out, these frames so far. It's been played at a real lick. You can see there, just perfect angle, actually, the way John cues. It's really flowy, it's really natural. Frame. Great player to watch when he's on form. This has been a great match to watch. Yeah, and that was a lovely finish. It really was. I, I thought he was odds against when he first came to the table because he had some problems at the top and the one near the centre. He didn't land nicely on his first shot, but took that one up to the top left corner from an awkward position and then backed himself to play the difficult positional shot up the table. And from there, it was just perfect all the way. He looks as confident as we've seen him here on Free Sports. He looks very good out there. Six. John Sullivan to break, leading three frames to two. So John Sullivan a frame up and with the next break. Crumsy hits them. I think that's about as, as loud as <laughs> I've heard the break. He is yeah. absolutely crunching them. Wow, is he giving that? And he's a very, very strong man. He can generate a lot of power out there. Yellow balls in play. Yellow at the top of the table next to that red. The obvious problem, trying to solve it here. That does you nicely. As long as he's on the one to the middle pocket, and he may not be. Yeah, I don't think he is. Otherwise, he'd have played it. Mm, tricky plant if he takes it on. Very difficult plant. Yeah, that was always long, long odds. So then Osama, big chance.
Just looking at the layout here on reds. Question whether the red goes past the eight ball to the bottom right corner. If it doesn't, that's a problem. It would go. If it doesn't go to the bottom right corner, it will go to the, the centre pocket, I believe. But it may not be the best option to go for the finish. And yeah, quite rightly. Sensible. Yeah. That was a tough pot along the top cushion, so I don't mind that at all. OK, we've seen John come up with a couple of big shots already tonight. You know, and he's, you're leaving him an opportunity for another one, but you have to play the percentages at times. And if he gets a, a little nudge on that oh, red... That'll do, yeah. Cheers. Well, that's good news, bad news. He's, he's tied a red at the top of the table up more. And actually, the red that next to the eight ball it could have easily flicked on a bit more than it has. So, touch of fortune there for, for John. On another day, he could have easily left a good run out here for, for Osama. Yeah, it certainly could be easier, that's for sure. Couple of problems. Another safety incoming, is it? Or is he going to take them on? It's a good shot. Good pot to the corner. He'd love to have come up just a fraction shorter than he has. He's a little bit straight on the one to the top right corner to be able to play the cannon into the, the red and yellow that are together, which would have been a really good option for him. It's not there now. You can do it off this ball. The problem with doing it off this ball, you, you don't have that one at the top of the table to land on if, you know, when you play the cannon, you always want to have a ball to land on. He sh should still give himself a, an option or two down the table, so it's, it's got to be worth playing the cannon. Half ball on the red would be perfect. Oh, he's gone two cushions and trying to go into it with more pace, but misses the pot. All his focus was on the cannon. Yeah, got the cannon lovely, but that's your problem. And John, don't think he's particularly in the mood for offering up second chances. Two cushion lead. That bounced a little bit more than you liked. Oh, he's got a kick, I think. I think that's why he's throwing his arms up in the air. I think he gets a little bit of a bad contact here. It just squares up on contact. Oh, let's have a look now. Is it just a miss or is this a really poor contact? Yeah, hard to tell from the replay. Either way, it's a sickener for John Sullivan. This frame was absolutely in his hands. I believe he was trying to play a two-way shot where he gets the, the snooker at the same time as taking the pot on. It takes a bit of pressure off, but he has not got the cover either. Well, let's off then for John Sullivan for 4 2. That one was never in doubt. Two frames clear with 25 remaining. John Sullivan is in the driver's seat in this round of 64. Welcome back to the ultimate Paul Masters, Sam Meschini at the table. Off his break. That's the key shot. Missed the cannon, so needs a big bounce. I think he's okay to have a shot at this eight ball. I don't think it's where he wanted it to be. Yeah, I think he was playing the cannon on the red there, just to trace the side, just to guarantee the cannon, but perhaps just didn't want to risk playing a, a shot slow over that distance with any side. But, yeah, he's left himself awkward. Hampered queuing, tricky eight ball. Big moment in this match. Oh, he's got to swerve it as well. He's not on it. Oh, 
Well, it's a great effort. But in an ideal world, he wouldn't have had to play a shot anywhere near this difficult. So one key positional shot here for John Sullivan, the one nearest the eight ball. Just needs to leave a good angle. He'll probably leave it for his last ball. Good angle on his penultimate ball to be able to track down. He's got a decent margin of error. Try and land on it to the bottom right-hand corner pocket. Doesn't want to be straight or in offs even worse, obviously. Oh, that's cost him the frame. And he knows it. Ball in hand. Yeah, that ball will keep rolling and rolling and rolling. It is a fast, fast, responsive table. That's just caught John Sullivan out there. It's it, it's more surprising when you consider that he was trying to leave that at least a foot short of where he was, if not two, to guarantee the angle to be able to come down the table. Straight was absolutely no good for him whatsoever. So, um, yeah, really severely overhit that shot. Well, let's continue our run through the... Ultimate Pool Masters draw. This is uh, Q4 we've got here. This is the one we are playing tonight. Our fan dad and Scott Gillespie will face off for a place in the quarterfinal. Oh, we're back on Q3. Hello. That's uh, Simon Fitzsimmons, our semi-finalist. We saw that last week. He got past Craig Waddingham in a... In an outstanding performance. We've, we've seen some big, big time performances in the last few weeks. You know, when you think about, you know, Phil Harrison getting by Rob Chilton and Jordan Shepard, that performance by Josh Kane against Declan Brennan, you know, Simon Fitzsimmons putting Craig Waddingham, you know, one of the players of the tournament so far, to the sword last week. It was very impressive stepping up, playing against Craig in the form that Craig was in. Simon Fitzsimmons knew he had to turn up and he hit the ground running in that match, got off to a great start and just never let up. I think every time he came to the table but one, he cleared up. Uh, and I think the one that he didn't was a was a foul. So incredible, incredible match from Simon. And like all the players we've seen so far through to finals night, they've had to put up a big performance to make it. Red to the choice for John Sullivan. And that nudge has not worked out nicely for him. This is this yeah. Is now awkward. looks like the worst choice, doesn't it? Yeah, this is awkward. Having to really fire this in, and that's asking a lot into these centre pockets. Whenever you play with that much pace, it, it's sort of you're almost a bit fearful. Just catch the jaw, and it's staying up. Yeah, dead weight. This drops, but he's really had to play it very, very hard. And this is now a big chance because yellows aren't a bad colour set here for me. As soon as that first shot was played by John Sullivan, it was strange. You saw the red red ball flash up next to his name and you instantly thought, I think I'd rather be yellows here. It's amazing how often that can happen. That as soon as you take one colour set, it just makes the other colour set better. First shot there for Meschini was just a little bit too firm, so it left himself a little bit straighter than was perfect, which meant he couldn't come down the table. Fortunately for him, he does have a couple close to the pocket. Still in good shape. One good positional shot required to land on that yellow on the right-hand side. May be able to do it off this one. It's a bit of a stretch. A thin clip into the corner and, and almost target that red by the right centre pocket. Have that in your mind. Might need just a, a little bit of check side. Let's see which way he goes here. Oh, he's playing it plain ball. And the problem with that is he slid by the red and now he's snooking himself. That's put himself into a world of trouble. Bit of a swerve round this one. Still a half a chance to, to sort of knock it in, but it's a tough one. It's great effort. Oh, he thought it was in. He thought that was in. I must say, I thought it had a chance to. But yet again, Sam Maschini nearly potting a great swerve shot, but shouldn't have been forced to. That's a good shot from John, straight into his bad cluster. Yeah, the previous shot from 
Moschini, I'd, I'd like to have seen just that commit to one way or another play, that two cushion or one, you know, or no cushions to almost target the red off two or off, off zero so that you can, uh, off one, sorry, just the bottom cushion, so that uh, you're almost guaranteeing being on that ball. Nice shot from John, just get the yellow out of the way. Wasn't worried if it went in or not, just wanted it away from the, the eight ball. Oh, wow. Just thinking that Foul. he left himself straighter than he really wanted. He got so much further up the table than his oh, ideal. Yeah. If he'd left the cue ball in the oh, middle really? of the table, it's just a, a plain ball pot, let the cue ball drift down. But when you look from the overhead, he, he's got the cue ball so far up the table and he's just off straight the wrong way that he was really trying to power that one in to get the cue ball back to the middle of the table. And, frame. you know, it's such a subtle difference. That's cost him the frame. He could have easily just left the cue ball low and, and made it simple for himself. Well, well, well. All square. We take a look back at this fourth quarter of the draw then. As uh, our fan dad will indeed play Scott Gillespie a little bit later on in our first match. That'll come up at just a shade after half past seven this evening. And Rob Warren is awaiting the winner of the group that we're playing right now. It will be Jimmy Croxton or one of these two, Sam Maschini and John Sullivan, of course, that dream tie of Michael Hill, Sean Chipperfield never quite came to fruition. Yeah, an, an interesting one there when you look at the draw. I, th I believe Rob Warren was the player that was that came in as a late replacement for Jimmy Croxton, who was out because of COVID, and they could end up playing each other. Obviously, there's a lot to happen here this afternoon, but uh, that could well be the match this Hang evening. Funny old game, isn't it? It's a very funny game, yeah. And this one, this match certainly has been there's been times in this match you felt like John should have really separate him, separated himself from Osama, but he sort of kept him in it. Yeah, been a strange old game. It really has. I think there's been some amazing standard for some frames then other frames they've just had moments where I just feel like either player has had a, a moment where they've lost their head a second for a second yeah just a just for a, a little bit here and there just a moment of you know just composure out there and could be the difference I, I really do feel like John could be could be 6-2 up here in the way the match has gone the way the chances have gone but he's allowed Moschini back into the match you, know, you consider the couple of couple of errors that that John Sullivan has made from really dominant positions, almost a little bit careless in places. See the grimace there on. Osama's face, he was trying to come lower down the table and he's, he hasn't come far enough. He's on nothing here. Doesn't take much, does it? It's just completely run aground in a clearance like this. I think for me what it does is when you see somebody play as well as Jimmy Croxon did play in the in the previous match, you know, he made the game look really, really simple. To be honest, both him and Michael Hill did. You know, and then you see these guys are obviously out there and one of these two guys could make it through tonight. Um, but, you know, the game all of a sudden just feels a little bit tougher in places. A little bit more reassuring for the mere mortals, maybe. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Both John and Asama at times have made the game really, really easy, but just at moments, as I say, they've made it look really difficult. There's another one there for Asama, and this now is there for John. I'd love to have counted that yellow out. He'd have loved to have counted that yellow out. And now he might not have an awful lot to go at. Yeah, that was, that was the key shot. Cannon the yellow out, be on the next ball. So just taking the pocket this time, not going to continue the the finish. The only bad news for him is he left a 
a really simple shot here for Maschini to play the, the right across the cushion, play it off the yellow and open up the pocket once again for him. So still left a decent opportunity for his opponent. Doesn't have to take it on, of course, but it's there if he wants it. Oh, he hasn't moved it far enough. Oh, at, least he, at least he's left himself an angle to go into it again, but that wasn't the shot he wanted. 15 second shot clock now for Sam Maschini to contend with. He's been a little unlucky. That's not bad though. That is not bad at all. Left John in a really poor position. Got the yellow off the table, limited John's sights to anything but the one he's close to and he's left a road over a pocket. John is under a bit of pressure with his shot and not much time to do it in. Oh, what a shot. What a great shot that is. Wow. He's made some big shots tonight already, John Sullivan. That's the biggest yet in terms of the scoreline at least. Five four in front. Okay. Satisfied. Clutch of the queue. Have a look at this for a pot. Outstanding. Just having a couple of words with some watchers on. Scott Gillespie who's sat over on that side of the table. Two who've built a reputation for pulling something out of the fire. Yeah, two very, very big shot makers. We're seeing that from John Sullivan in this match. To be honest, it's the, the simple shots that have got away from him. You know, he's, he's come up with the big shots. That pot he took onto the top corner there was it was absolutely magnificent. If he misses it, he loses the frame. Probably felt forced into it, felt the pot was as easy as the, the safety or snooker was. And, and, he, and he makes it no problem. It's the, the sort of simple shots that have got away from him completely. And he's going to come up dry. I'd love to be able to tell you how. He's crunched them yet again. Yellow balls in play. So this is where Osama Moschini needs to keep an eye on the, the match clock. Not something he'd have experienced a huge amount before. He's only one frame behind, so it's not hugely important right now, but eight minutes on the clock, he just needs to keep half a watch on it. Obviously something that John Sullivan's experienced a fair amount more. Well, I don't think Osama can quite believe what's just happened. Call. Yeah, it's quite hard to believe this this miss. Harder to miss than it was to make it. Yeah, it just catches the jaw with pace and it stays out. And this time John's happy to just slow things down, tie up a yellow, make it awkward. Oh, <laughs> look at the confidence of that. He's <laughs> After I missing that last shot to then... But nonchalantly stroll up and play a treble like that. The thing I like about that shot was the fact that he'd already taken two steps to his right, getting ready to play the next shot before the ball had hit the second cushion. He knew the minute he hit that that the treble was in. That's amazing. Uh, that's all right. He's okay. He'd have loved that red to have just not been in, as in the way, but... He's not in a terrible position here, Osama. He's still just one frame back, remember. This would tie things up. Yeah, had to play down the table off that ball. Couldn't use the yellow on the other side to come down the table because he was going to get blocked out by that red. So good choice. And even though he's going to leave himself from distance here, it's not a problem. Just play into the red. You're going to be on the eight ball. What a treble. I can't get over it. <laughs> I can't. 
It's, it's Have you ever seen a bigger disparity between two shots back to back? For me, it was just the belief that he knew it was in the instant he uh, he hit it. Five all. Six minutes right. and change remain. Have a watch of this. Oh, fantastic. Right in the heart of the pocket. I absolutely love that. Just the just the way he just he knew the minute he struck that. Uh, yeah. Fantastic and a huge moment as well. You know, not much time on the clock and, and you could tell John Sullivan he was trying to slow things down there with his shot choice, keep it tight. Um, but Osama's come up with that massive shot. Six minutes and seven seconds remain for the small tiger and the soul man. Frame 11. Osama Moschini to break. Five frames all. Well, after a slow start with his break, Moschini has got it going in the last couple. Oh, he's cursed him there. Oh, he's made a ball. But this is messy. Extension call. When you've only got five minutes or five and a half minutes left on the clock, you want a nice big open split off your break. Give yourself an opportunity to run them out and, and sort of say over to you, over to you, John Sullivan. But he hasn't got that. He's going to have to work this one through. And the problem he's got is if he continues to take the finish on and doesn't get it, as we always say, you know, you're going to make the game a bit easier for your opponent. A very important visit to the table. That red by the, the eight ball. That's tricky. I just wonder if he can land on it. I'm not just, sure if it goes to the right middle. Does it go if he can get straight enough on it? Possibly. That's what he's playing now. He needs to make the pot, though. Well, if you're going to miss, at least he's missed early. And he's missed pretty handily as well. He's covered that bag, which is... I mean, it makes this horrible, horrible run out for yellows. This is awful. And you've got two balls in the middle there in the triangle area, which have absolutely no pocket. Yeah, so he may not be thinking finish here. Just get the um, red off the table and get the cue ball tight to the, the red in the middle of the table. Well, it's the same job. He, he knows that dropping the cue ball where it has now, he's not left anything on, and he's opening things up for himself. Oh, this is now such a big frame. It really is. Another good shot from Maschini this time. Uh, touching ball. That's clever, though. Such an advantage getting rid of your, your opponent's balls off the table when they're covering pockets can do that whilst keeping it tight. It's such a, an advantage. John's left a tempter. That red by the eight ball is going to be a problem if he is tempted by this one to the, either the top left or right. No, not tempted at all. So trying to open things up whilst keeping it safe. I like that choice a lot. That's quite a good shot, yeah. Oh, it's Johnny might be tempted. No, just continuing to keep it safe. Clever. This is where we start to sort of think about the, the six red shootout. This has got some mileage in it, this frame. There's three and a half minutes left. If we are tied after the clock runs down, we will go to a six red shootout. You have to feel that one of these two players is going to have an opportunity for a finish of some sort, though. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Who it's going to be, I have absolutely no idea. Anybody's guess. Oh, he's judged that well. Knew the path of the cue ball was going straight and off, so had to judge the pace well. And he's done that really nicely. This time, John can't run up the table because of the way the reds are, are laid out. There's two or three really good safety shots from both of them on the trot yeah. to keep things tied up. Try and get the cue ball back to where it is now. Yeah, really good again. 
have to hit a cushion after contact. So you can't just roll up to the red in that situation. John has to hit a cushion after contact here. And he's done that. Now, yeah, this is, is on. tempted. This is on. Not tempted. He did have a shot to the, the centre pocket there that could have opened everything up, but it was a tough pop. Decided against it. Will he? Oh, he's got another cushion. Okay, so that was deemed to have hit a cushion after contact. I'd need to see a replay of that. Have a little watch of this. Yeah, I think just about. It hit the cushion, hit the yellow, hit the cushion again. Sort of squeezed in there. This is a couple of shots away. And then someone's going to have a minute to go and try and win it. I think this is the moment for here for John Sullivan. Good news for Moschini fans is that at least he's tied that yellow at the top of the table up. Well, I think he has. John's taken it on. Yeah, he has tied it up. Oh, this is on. If you're Simon Moschini, you've got to go. Yeah, this is the moment. This really is. Will he get another shot? I think John is sat in his chair now, hoping for a six-red shootout. He really is. That looks to be perfect. Looks like he can just drop this in, red into the centre pocket, or he could go into the corner first, then red into the centre pocket. Maschini's break next as well, so John really is hoping against hope. But this should be simple. Should be A, B, C. Well, just has, he's just left an angle where the cue ball is going into the yellow. He has to sort of go wide of it now. Yeah, well done. That could easily have gone wrong. A massive frame to win. He's going to come up just short of the middle pocket. It's for 6-5. And Usama Maschini crunches it in. Frame. A big, big frame to win. And he is all but in the next round. Yeah, the clock does stop with 13 seconds to go, but uh, there's going to be enough time for a break, and that is it. So, barring a, a golden duck, so that's cue ball and eight ball, it will be Moschini through. But you have to say that was a, a really well-played tactical frame there from Moschini. He, both of them were playing some really good shots to keep it tight, uh, and you felt that John perhaps went, you know, a shot too early, oh, and it wasn't really on. By the way, it's, uh, it's John's with the next break. My apologies. It was Usama who set up that tactical frame. So this is a little bit more, a little bit more likely to potentially have some drama. A golden break is what John Sullivan needs. He needs the eight ball in a pocket and it has stayed absolutely still. And he concedes. Usama Maschini wins against John Sullivan. And the small tiger with a big victory against the soul man goes through to tonight's final to take on Jimmy Croxton. Winner of that will go into the last 16 to be played from half seven. A massive result for the man from Morocco. Yeah, huge result. You, you look watching the whole match through and looking at the stats there, you feel like John Sullivan from 4-2 ahead, he probably should have gone ahead and, and got himself further in front. A couple of poor mistakes to allow Moschini back into the match. A couple of bad fouls here and there. But even though Moschini missed quite a few opportunities, six missed pots in the match, held himself together really well. And that treble he made very nonchalantly um, to keep himself going and then give himself that opportunity in the final frame. Absolutely fantastic from him and he deserves his place in the next round. Yeah, he clutched up when he needed to. Huge credit to Osama Maschini who is through into the next round. He takes on Jimmy Croxton for a place in the last 16. That final is next. A very warm welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Masters here on Free Sports. Two very brilliant games in each of their own different ways, Simon, so far. We saw a fantastic performance from Jimmy Croxton to knock out six-time world champion Mick Hill in our first match tonight, where barely a foot was put wrong. But in the second game, slightly different. There was a couple more mistakes in it, but because of that, it made it ever so slightly more dramatic, and that was a great finish, in particular from the Moroccan Osama Maschini. 
Yeah, absolutely fantastic. You know, the drama on the, in the second match was brilliant to watch. And yeah, you see it in sport all the time. The odd mistake here and there can really add to that drama. I think when John Sullivan drives home tonight, he's going to be kicking himself that he didn't separate himself from, from Moschini there in the match. He probably will feel like he should have won it. But fair play to Osama. He kept himself in the match. That trouble he made was fantastic. And then, it, you know, it, the calmness of that last clearance was absolutely brilliant. It's like, it's like he's been playing with a match clock his whole life. He looked completely in control out there. You know, so he's he's absolutely in with a chance here uh, in this uh, group final against Jimmy Croxton, and as you say, who who was all but flawless in his match. Well, that's Jimmy getting the lag, so he will be breaking first in this one, and a great chance for both players because. I think I'd be right in saying they were both the underdogs in their opening round matches. This hasn't happened too many times in the tournament so far where both underdogs have gone through. What a chance tonight to make a little bit of history. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it has happened uh, so far in this competition, but I think Jimmy's going to go from being a decent-sized underdog in his match uh, against Michael Hill to being a decent favourite potentially yep. here against Moschini, and certainly in terms of the eyes with the, of the bookies. Um, I don't know whether the you know the players themselves will feel like that out there and, or they're just going to play the game, but if Jimmy plays the way he did in the first match compared to how Moschini played, then you feel like uh, you know he's, he's going to be the favourite for sure. Where's Jimmy with that opening break? He's made a ball, so he's at the table. And I don't think he'll be absolutely over the moon with the split, but we'll take a look at it in just a moment. Broke really well in his match against Hill. It was where the, the match was sort of built on for, for Jimmy Croxton. Four break clearances in the match for him. And, you know, he hit the ground running by taking his, his first two. He really started to put the pressure on to, to Michael. And... Difficult Yellow first opportunity right. for him here. Question whether the yellow on the right-hand side goes to the top right corner. It probably just about does, but the yellow on the left-hand side blocked off by two reds. That's a real problem, and he doesn't have an angle to do anything about it now. Hard to see how... Jimmy Croxton is going to get to that bad ball. He can take this one to the bottom left and potentially leave one to the top right to get across for it. But that's not going to be easy. It's sort of blocked off from reds from the path. So tricky. Yeah, just knocking it over the pocket. Yeah, I don't hear that choice shot at all. That's quite a sensible one, especially in the opening frame. No need to push the boat out and go and lose the frame. Make Osama go and win it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you push the boat out there, you know Jimmy could easily have potted himself down to his last ball. And if you then don't get on that last ball or get it out, you have just made the game easy for your opponent. And you never want to do that, especially in the first frame of match. Ask the question. Will Jimmy Croxton be more tempted this time? Can he see the yellow over the right center? It's difficult to get into it from this one over the pocket. He'd have to hit an incredible shot to do so. Well, he might have landed perfectly here. Very thin clip into the center pocket. Has he got the angle to go into the red on the left-hand side and open this up? He might have, you know. Not quite. Just for a second there, I thought he'd landed so close to it that he landed perfect, but no, he obviously didn't. And well, everything we said about him not going for it previously, it sort of stands still here. The more he pots without having a route out, the harder he's going to make it for himself. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that so good. Wow. What a shot that is. I'll be honest, when. when when Jimmy Croxton was queuing up here, I, I, I had no idea what he was trying to do. Uh, that was absolutely brilliant. Great vision. We've seen some good shots tonight. We've seen some great shots tonight. That's the best of the bunch. Yeah, that, that was That's fantastic. That's amazing. Brilliant from Jimmy Croxton. Has to finish it off.
which he does. What an opening frame for the Joker. Have a watch of this. Absolutely as played. Superb. Not just the not just the sort of vision to see it, not even the execution to play it online, but the pacing, the control to play it exactly perfect, just to nudge the yellow out over the pocket, keep the red tucked to the rail. Superb, superb shot that. Yeah, is it, this is as good as I've seen him in terms of his confidence out there and just he just looks like he the belief is that every time he takes it on he's gonna make that clearance and yeah that was that was pretty special and, and a great way to sort of set the tone in the match. Well it's come up dry. He's very fortunate to not go in off. Look how close this cue ball goes to going in the top left. But assuming that Jimmy Crotchton can see a yellow over the right centre pocket, he has left a great opportunity for a reverse clearance. Every single yellow on this table has a comfortable pocket. He could take reds as well if he wanted to, right over the left centre, but I think yellows are the... It's got to be the way he's seeing it. Yellow ball's in play. For me, the one key shot is just the transition down the table from the top of the table. He could go down the table now if he wanted to and leave the ones at the top for last. Depends which way around he sees it. You'd say the yellow on the right on the very bottom of the table is the hardest one, but there's still plenty of room to land on it. Just overrun the positional side of that shot. He dropped it in as slowly as he could and he's still come just a fraction too far. I think he would really like to be on the one on the bottom of the table or straight on the one to the centre pocket. Very good. Very good recovery. He looks the business at the moment. The only thing he'd love to have done was clear all three yellows at the bottom of the table and leave the, the eight ball in the middle. Because now he's going to be leaving the yellow at the bottom of the table. And when you look up the table, I question whether the eight ball goes to either of the top pockets. It may go to the top right. So he potentially has a tricky positional shot onto the eight ball to play. And he's just come round to have a look to see if it does go to the top right. If it does go, it's not too bad. I think it does. I think that red might even make a big pocket. Yeah, the way he's played that tells me that it does because he can just stun this in. He might have to come on and off the cushion. But yeah, he's come back to have a look at the angle he wants, so I'm sure it does. Ooh, he's gone a bit further than he wanted to there. I think he's gone far enough that at least he's not hampered queuing. If it stops half a roll short, it's it's actually harder. Played that really well. And you saw there in the end, it was it was nailed on straight into that corner pocket. Simple as you like for the man from Newcastle under Lime, right around the corner. Is the two-time pro event winner and Supreme Masters finalist. Anyone who can go that deep in a competition of that calibre is a man not to be trifled with. He's one of the ultimate pool professionals on the Pro Series. Had a couple of good runs in both events one and two. And you heard in his interview earlier on, he's been putting the hours in. And he's got some decent practice partners around this neck of the woods. Yeah, you're never short for a practice partner when you're in, in the sort of Stoke area. And that's for sure. There's such a, a huge amount of talent in the area. A lot of great players from this area. Oh, where's the eight ball? Golden break. 
golden break for Jimmy Croxton. It was almost a golden duck. Look at the white. It so nearly went in off here, off the break. And that might have been a route into the match for some Maschini. Not much reaction. I was waiting for it because he didn't look at the eight ball at all until he was only focused on the cue ball. He knows he didn't quite get the break contact perfect, which is why the cue ball nearly went in off. But that eight ball would have dropped in. What a bonus for, for Jimmy Croxton. Wow, what a perfect start, really. 3 0 up. <clears throat> and Osama Maschini has got some serious work to do Osama here. Maschini to break. Holding three frames to nil. Decent break, opens them up nicely, makes a ball. So important he's given himself an opportunity. Time not to panic. 3-0 can be turned around. Hasn't really had a chance to get going in this match yet. The only shot he's really played was a safety shot in that opening frame where he just tried to keep things tight. a little bounce or a double kiss I think that's okay yeah I think so he's on the red to the bottom left he's got a little angle if he wants it he could just cannon into the red just above it stay on the other one to the bottom right corner and everything's then open he's having a good look can he get through to the potting angle possibly not of his little swerve yeah the little swerve means he couldn't play the cannon I was talking about but that's okay Might just make his route out harder, but the one when he pots one, it's going to open up the other. You can clearly see that from his camera angle. Not sure if he wanted to play that one off the red or not. May have just caught it accidentally, because if it comes out any further than it has, it would have blocked this one off. One to the centre pocket. He's got to try and pick a gap between the yellows to get to the one near the bottom right-hand corner. And then he's got to avoid the yellows once again to get the cue ball back to the middle of the table. So even though he's three balls away, this is tricky. Yeah, this is fraught with a bit of danger, isn't it? it needs to be really, really precise here. If he could just drop this in and go through the gap, through the triangle area, that's better. But he has to get a bit further across the table. Oh, that's tight. I think he's on it. Just now, he probably needs to play this with just a, a trace of left-hand side, just to straighten the cue ball up to make sure he avoids the yellows. There you go. There's the side, but he's missed the pot. Just felt like it was a clearance getting away from him. Not the clean run to the line for Jimmy Croxton. We have another look at that miss from Osama Moschini. Red to the bottom right area of the table. That's what he's played on now when he's come up a little bit short. Needed the cue ball to roll another. Well, on and off the cushion would have been perfect. Now things start to get difficult for him because he hasn't landed. course he doesn't have to go for the clearance here I was just thinking there might be a little bit of well, the, the sort of merit in playing a safety there because probably the easiest way to play it would have been then well, the shot I was thinking was the yellow onto the red get the red off the table and snooker Maschini on the the eight ball mm. which is 
what he's doing, although he hasn't got the, the snooker. He wasn't worried about getting the complete snooker. He was more worried about just leaving no sort of shot on. I think if he was a little bit straighter on that shot, he would have just come back to get that snooker. But he's taking a little bit of a gamble, but it's probably the right choice. Ooh. Thought for half a second there he was at it again. The Simon Maschini. It's a great effort, isn't it? It really is. You see how close he has to get to the yellow to be able to make that shot. And actually, when you look at it from the replay, he had to get even closer to the yellow to hit it straight enough. So I suspect Jimmy had actually had a quick look at that to see that you had to almost hit the yellow to, to get to the angle you needed. So Jimmy Croxon played the percentages and he's played them well. Well, a perfect start so far for Jimmy Croxton, who has scarcely put a foot wrong all evening long. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Jimmy Croxton, just keeping it rolling, keeping the momentum going his way. Another perfect frame of pull from his side of the table. This is the man tasked with getting his way back into the match. The man who was one of the outsiders at the start of the night. Rocking champion a couple of years ago before, well, pre-COVID. And then a Masters finalist in 2019 as well. Yeah, lost to Adam Davies in that Masters semi-final of 2019. A great run through to the semis for him. It really highlights, I think, to the to the poor world, the level of pool he can play. Frame five, Jimmy Croxton to break. Leading four frames to nil. Well, last break for Jimmy Croxton was almost a golden duck, but it was a golden break. And what can he do this time? Absolutely crunches them once again. And no surprise when you hit them as sweetly as that, that you make a ball. That's arguably the best he's hit them all night. Yeah, he's been breaking brilliantly all night long. In fact, you could you, you could say that the worst break he's hit tonight was the, the golden break. I think you of, could absolutely say that, yeah. In terms of quality of contact. Yeah. Doesn't have a great first ball, I don't think. Oh, a little clip back on the on the red and red going into the eight balls. Just going to make a, cause him a little bit of a headache at the back end of this finish. Knocked the eight ball awkward and he's made the red just to the left of it. Really awkward to land on now. I don't know if there's enough room to to play onto the red in the in the triangle area, but if you, even if you could get onto it, you're guaranteed to be going into the eight ball or the yellows just to the side of it, making the position out from it very, very difficult. He could, if he wanted to, play underneath it, potentially to the top of the table. Looks like he's going to leave it for his last ball. So drop this one in, come down the middle of the table, leave yourself an angle to be able to drift onto the red, either to the top of the table or try and come past it to the bottom left corner. Top of the table gives him much more control. See which way Jimmy's going to play it. You can see from this camera angle how little room there is to land on this red so yeah not a surprise to see him come down for it he actually goes in the center pocket which really helped didn't have to play for it into the corner and perfect control he really is keeping such nice control of this cue ball been so good tonight and there we go five zip About as good as it gets if you're Jimmy Croxton. He's absolutely flying, looking to join 
That man at the end of the bracket right there in the semi-finals, Phil Harrison. Our first semi-finalist running the gauntlet in that first quarter of the draw. Where it was, I mean, a who's who, really. And he'll be facing off against Josh Kane, who got by Declan Brennan and Carl Sutton to get through into the semi-finals in quarter two. It's been incredible looking back through those matches, just the, the picking out some of the great matches we've seen throughout this great competition. Oh, we've seen so many. It's just Match of the tournament is a difficult one to choose. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's a tough one for sure, and everyone will have a different opinion on it as well. For what it's worth, it's Josh Kane versus Jordan Church, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Perf performance of the uh, of the tournament will be another one, too, tough one to call as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I, I think that's probably the hardest actually. We may well need to wait a week before we uh, get into that debate because we've got finals night coming up. Yellow balls in play. Jimmy will be in the running for it, by the way. What a performance it's been this week from him so far. Three frames away from a place in the last 16. Off his break, there have been five clearances and a golden break tonight. Just difficult to play against that, no matter who you are. Whether you're Mick Hill or Sam Maschini, that is difficult to play against. He's been lethal. The composure he's showing at the table as well. He knows he's playing at an incredible level, but he's just staying in that zone. It's just, right, focus on this this next chance. Let's not get carried away. It's still plenty of time left in this match. It's just next chance and, and go from there. Well, in a strange way, he's had that sort of warning, hasn't he? Because he did it in that match against Mick where he had the frame and it's absolute mercy. He just lost concentration once, played a shot that... He said to us in the interview afterwards, he was like, I knew I shouldn't have played when I got down on it. And actually, that was a little bit of a warning for him, wasn't it? A bit of a sort of check yourself moment. And since then, he just remained on that tunnel vision. Yeah, that, and a visit. Oh, here we go. It's another mistake from, from Jimmy, just as we were saying it. The tunnel vision, and very similar to the mistake he made against... Michael Hill, we can still clip this in, but it's much tougher than he wanted it to be. Oh, shot. <laughs> oh, shot. 6-0, Jimmy Croxton. He got away with that one. Just as we were saying how good he's been all night, that was a loose shot. But what a clutch pot to recover it. 6-0, the Joker leads. Well, everyone, welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Master. Stephen Jameson, Simon Webb, still with you for this one. Our final match of the afternoon session this evening is nearing completion a little bit quicker than we thought, Simon. Jimmy Croxton is rattling his way through 6-0 up in this last 32. Absolutely phenomenal performance so far. Yeah, I quite often think, you know, when a player plays as well as, as Jimmy Croxton did in his first match against Michael Hill, you, you sort of question, you know, can you keep that rolling? Can you do it again in the next match? And, and you know, you know it, it, sometimes it's really hard to do when you play to that level, but he's just continued rolling and he is absolutely in the zone. He's, he's showing no emotion at the table. He's got almost tunnel vision out there and he's just walking to the table, got an opportunity, take it on. If it's not quite there, player safety, wait for a better opportunity, then take it on. And it, it's just flawless pull so far. It really has been. And Simon Maschini, precious little to offer in return, but he's not had many opportunities to do so. We're going to head back into the arena and get this one back underway. Jimmy Croxon, two from home, remember, against the Moroccan Maschini. And he's got the next break. And his break has been brilliant tonight. When we talk about his worst break being a golden break, it uh, shows you how good it has been. I'll do. That will do nicely. Just having a little early peek at that split, and I think it's another good one. Yeah, I wasn't sure how uh, easy the first shot might be. Didn't quite catch it as clean as some 
tonight. But still gets a couple to fall. And yeah, he does have a good opening shot. I wasn't sure with a quick Yellow glance, but yeah, five. these have opened up perfectly for him. And well, the, the mood he's shown tonight, it would be a major surprise not to see him take these out. Yeah, it really would. Especially if the yellow next to that red in the top half the table goes in the right centre because he can just drop this in, play the one in the middle, and then and then he's down the table. If he has to come back for it into the top left corner, and that even might be tight, then it uh, could be slightly trickier for him. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, I think he's, uh, I think he's okay. Having to come down the table first, so this, this yellow can't go into the centre pocket. You can leave it for his last ball, so just take this one, just bump the red out of the way. Leave yourself as straight as possible on the yellow into the middle, and you, you're just tracking up to the, the ball at the top. It's He's just making the game look incredibly simple, yeah. and, it, and it really isn't. <laughs> no, promise. been some level tonight from Jimmy Croxton. It really has. We, you know, we, we talk about quite a bit the, the ability of players who win the second match of the night to go on and then win the, the third, keep that momentum. But for the only time in the tournament, we'll be asking as Jimmy wobbles that one, he's all right, 7-0. But for the only time in the tournament, We'll be asking, can Jimmy keep the momentum through a break and then go again? Because he's not going to have a huge amount of time. I think he's the second match on, so he's got maybe an hour and a half, a couple of hours tops to get himself maybe out the arena, get some fresh air, breathe it in and, and go again. But he's going to be flying in his brain. It's a strange sort of dynamic, isn't it? It, it is, and we do question it quite a lot when the player gets essentially four minutes, the match finishes, we go to an advert break, and then they've got to go again. They get four or five minutes maximum to get themselves ready. I think a two-hour window, because he would play the second match right. this evening, uh, is a bit more Some into sort of normal break. tournament play that, that Jeremy Croxton will be used to, that the nature of winning a match, having to have a bit of a break, and then going back on. So I, I don't anticipate it, to, anticipate it being a huge problem for him. Um, but he would, the mood he's in right now, yeah, I could see him really wanting just to keep rolling. So I'm asking he breaks dry. Uh, when it, you know, when it rains, it pours in this sport so often. And I think Red that's the one thing that you'd really pick up on on a Simon Moschini's game as you see him really showing the face of someone who's 7-0 down and can't really do a whole lot about it, is the break is a little bit of a weakness for him, I can, I can tell. It's not as powerful as others. Doesn't no. quite split open as much. Doesn't give him as easy as a chance as it could. Yeah, I think that's a really fair call. You know, sometimes it's it's not just about making a ball, it's about giving yourself those great opportunities. And it's a, But he also has to just... Um, he just has to take this one. You know, he, he showed enough in that first match to show us what he can do and his results in the past. I just think you, you have matches like this where there's just nothing you can do. Your opponent plays to such a high level. They get all the first opportunities and they take them. You, you just have to be able to, you know, accept that can happen in Paul and, and move on to the next event. You know, for me, you know, looking at Osama Moschini's performance in this match, and he's, he's done precious little wrong. I, I think I can only really remember one missed pot. Um, and I don't really remember having him having an opportunity to go for a finish. Just for a second there, I thought Jimmy Croxton had overhit that positional shot, but he's absolutely perfect once again. Well, there is the ultimate pool team, the uh, ultimate pool directors. I've been enjoying what they've seen tonight. Jimmy's just taking his time here. I think he would have preferred to be, I said he was perfect, but probably another inch down the table would have just been a slightly better angle for him, but he's still fine, just working exactly where he wants to be for the next positional shot.
guess the big question mark, does that eight ball go anywhere without having to move it? And the answer, looking at his reaction to that shot, is no. He was absolutely trying to get just a little nudge on the eight ball. And he's just missed it. Has moved, has moving the yellow away from that centre pocket just opened a window for him. Possibly not. Looking at his uh, facial expressions around the table. Oh, it does go. He just caught a glimpse of it from that camera angle. And the reason he was pulling that expression was the fact that he was worried about sliding by the yellow. But he did that really, really well. What a performance. Too good. Too good. Right. Jimmy Croxton, 8-0 in the last 32. As good as it gets. The Joker rolls on through to the last 16. He'll take on Rob Warne. And Rob will have been watching that and just thinking, wowie, am I in for a game. Flawless. Yeah, absolutely. That flawless is, is the word. He played brilliantly well in his first match against Michael Hill. But for me, he's raised the bar even more. And you look at the, this match and look at the stats, you go back to that first frame. Remember that amazing shot he came up with, which it looked like he'd potted himself into a bit of trouble. Comes up with that amazing shot, sets the tone for the match. And then from there, he's had, what's he had? Five finishes from the break and a golden break. I incredible stuff from Jimmy Croxton. Brilliant, brilliant performance. Just as, as good as it gets. As good as it gets from Jimmy Croxton. That is a superb performance. I can see as he's just joined us in the studio behind me. I'll tell you that to your face in a moment, Jimmy. We'll speak to Jimmy when we do come back. He is in the last 16 to face off against Rob Warren. We'll hear what he has to say about it when we return. A very warm welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Masters here on Free Sports. We are at long, long last through rounds one and two. That makes pretty good reading if your name is Jimmy Croxton. Two brilliant performances tonight. He secures his place in the last 16. Coming up later on this evening, beginning at half past seven. I'd like to say Jimmy joins us now. First of all, mate, massive congratulations. Two amazing performances from yourself just about faultless really especially in that second match that must be the best you've played in a little while yeah uh, you know I don't really know what to say I, you know I obviously felt confident after the first game you know obviously beating Mick and just needed to know that you know just, just had to just do the same thing again um, broke well um, I think I've gone top of the breaks board so which for me is amazing because the breaks probably been the weakest part of my game since I've been playing so it's just something I've worked on um, obviously it does help that the table's beautiful and obviously Scott's racking them up nice and tight and stuff which he does you know every match but yeah just just delighted to get through and play like that yeah you mentioned to me in our first interview scene when you talked about you've been really putting the hours and that comes into the break and everything doesn't it you've been really going at this hard pretty much ever since we've been back sort of as a, as a country really you've been really grinding and grafting away yeah I mean I play this is my club I play it here you know so obviously big thanks to, to Lee and Gaz who give me all the table time I need to, to practice with these brilliant conditions you know, obviously I don't get to play on, on the arena table but the other tables you know surrounding are, are you know of a, of a high level um, so I owe a lot to, to, to Lee and Gaz for that um, but yeah I've been putting the hours in and to be honest over the weekend I I, um, I had a stag do one of my me, me best friends and, and um, my business partner I went on his stag do which I should have gone and um I got the call Friday night uh, to say that I might be playing um, and I decided not to go and, and, and to be honest I was gutted and, and he was gutted but I think he understands and it was obviously the right decision to make because I've, I've come home for two days, I've practiced solid and I've put in two performances like that, I just hope it, it continues. Yeah, vindication for that decision I think it's safe to say. Look, you've, you've made it through, you get a couple of hours to, to rest up before you're straight into the last 16. Strange dynamic tonight but could end up being an absolutely amazing night for you. Well, I hope so, yeah. And next matchup, I think I'm playing Rob Warren, who, who funnily enough, took my place uh, with, with the COVID problem. So, Strange old game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, we practice together, we're friends, so it's, it's never nice playing your friends. But, you know, if I play like that, you know, Rob's got to, got to play well to, to win. Um, I'm sure it'll be a great game. You know, he's, he's a good player, as, as they all are. You know, there's, there's no no poor players here. You know, you're not playing in the, in the local leagues. Now it's everyone's at the top of the game and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously not here to make the numbers up. 
Absolutely not. Congratulations on a great performance tonight, mate. We look forward to seeing you later on this evening. Thanks, well, as Jimmy mentioned, top of the break dishes league, he goes overtaking Chris Day. Seven out of ten, including that golden break. That's pretty insurmountable, isn't it, Soren? Yeah, incredible performance. We've seen some brilliant performances throughout this tournament, but for, for Jimmy to come in and, and last minute put that dedication in to get himself right for tonight and come up with 7 out of 10, you know, that's hard to play against. And also when you throw into the mix, not just the 7 out of 10 from his own break, you've also got five reverse clearances off your opponent's break. You know, he was as close to flawless as you see. You can see for two matches. For me, there was one positional error, and which led to a missed pot, was the only mistake he made in two matches of, of all but flawless as Paul and, and you know it's as good as we've seen anybody in the tournament so far absolutely incredible yeah couldn't agree more and that arena now empty for the time being but we are not long away from being back out there a double header remember today we've still got our final last 16 group to come that's live at half past seven and we can now say this is it our fan dad versus Scott Gillespie for a place in the quarterfinals winner plays Rob Warren or Jimmy Croxton the way Jimmy's been playing tonight, you would not rule him out having a real night of nights and going all the way through to finals night if up against a great player in Rob Warren. Our fan dad, Scott Gillespie, is a fantastic match as well there too. Fantastic players who are bang, bang in form. What a night looking forward ahead. We've got a couple what hour and a bit to, to have a bit of a break. In fact, less than that. And then we're, we're straight back in. I, I can't wait to get going. Yeah, and, and one of those four guys is going to make it through to, to the semi-finals of this great competition. And you, you're absolutely right. You know, the way Jimmy's playing, you know, it's hard to hard to look past him. But those other three guys, they've all played brilliantly well to get through to this stage as well. And no two matches are the same. If these guys play this well, it will come down to who gets those opportunities and who can win those key moments. But it's going to be brilliant to watch as, as see how it unfolds. Well, we are back at half past seven. So you've got a little bit of time to maybe grab some dinner and sit yourself back in front of that telly nice and comfortable for our last 16 round four. We have three semi-finalists, Phil Harrison, Josh Kane and Simon Fitzsimmons. Only one man can join them. We're down to our final fourth to decide who that's going to be and that is coming up soon. Around about 45 minutes, myself and Simon. We'll see you then. <laughs> 